In this video, we're going to do a deep dive about Power Automate connectors, specifically built-in connectors. One thing you should know, something that is most certain to change is the content that I'm showing you today. I am recording this on September 5th, 2023, and things innovate quickly in the Power Automate world. So as of now, there are 15 built-in connectors that you can use in your flows, and that's with no subscription necessary, it's just available to all Power Automate users. So let's briefly go over what each of these are. We'll go one by one, what the connector is, a count of the triggers and actions, and any other little tidbits I can think of along the way. So first up is control. I use this one a lot and you probably do as well. There's no triggers on this, but there are six extremely valuable actions that you can use. Condition, that I use it all the time. If this, follow the left path. If that, follow the right path. Apply to each, also something that's used a lot. Do until, scope, switch, and terminate. So lots of cool things you can do with that. AI Builder, this is amazing if you're using AI Builder in your Dataverse, in your Power Apps, anywhere. You should be checking out this app. There are 18 actions, no triggers. So many actions, I can't list them all here. So go into Power Automate, check out this built-in connector to see what they all are. I highlighted some that I thought were really cool. Analyze sentiment, classify text, detect an object, translate, predict, and so much more. So cool. Data operation. I've been using data operation a lot lately, specifically compose. So if you need to compose something that you're going to use in later flows, that's a great place to do it. Create table. It'll give you an option for CSV or HTML. I've also been using this when I want to display my data from an output in a nice chart, for example, or table. Then we have filter, we have join, we have parse JSON, and select. Super valuable connector. Date and time. This is a great one. Again, no triggers on this, but date time will give you the ability to add to time, convert your time zone, get the current time, get a future time, get a past time, and subtract from time. Flow button for mobile. Um, you'll see another similar one. So flow button for mobile is cool. That is used in the trigger to manually trigger a flow. A user will push a button and then the flow will launch. No actions on that one. Um, alternatively, we have flows, which if you check out that icon, it's the same. So the flows connector doesn't have a trigger. It has one action, which is to run a child flow. Then we come into the more technical world, the HTTP. There are three actions and three triggers. They're HTTP, HTTP plus swagger, and HTTP webhook number functions no triggers and one action and that's to format number so this is valuable if you want to get a specifically formatted number that you want to insert into other areas other actions in your flow we have power pages this is a trigger and an action so the trigger is when power pages cause a flow then you can have a lot of actions happen or use it as an action when it's triggered somewhere else to return value to a power page so you can see this is extending what you can do within Power Pages simply by having this one very powerful action and this one very powerful trigger. Likewise, we have Power Virtual Agents. Also one trigger, one action. The trigger allows you to kick off an automation when a Power Virtual Agent calls a flow. Alternatively, you can use this as an action where you can return a value from another flow to a Power Virtual Agent. So super cool stuff you can do there. And then we have our Power Apps connector. So the Power Apps connector has two triggers. It's Power Apps or Power Apps version 2. And then there's one action, respond to a Power App or flow. Um, those two different triggers are based on what the Power App is. I forget off the top of my head. One of them is for sales um, and field service. And another one is more for a custom Power App. Request. We have one trigger when an HTTP request is received and one action response. Then we come to schedule. The trigger there is recurrence. So that can be used for a schedule cloud flow. And then there are two actions in that trigger as well, which allow you to delay or delay until. Super valuable. It's like classic workflow when we do waits. Text functions. There's no triggers for that. Your actions are find text position and substring. 
and variables. Uh, these are cool too. No triggers for variables, but you can use the variable connector to append to array, append to string, de decrement, I always do that, decrement, decrement, increment, initialize, and set. So I use this for set variable. And just for fun, I put out a couple common use cases there. You might want to utilize a built-in connector, not build in, built in. So one of them I, I pointed to earlier, here you go, built-in connector. One of them here is I use the compose action in the data operation connector often to create a URL that is a hyperlink to a CRM or customer engagement record in Dynamics 365. Um, second one, to provide different yes, no paths based on a prior step, use the conditional action in the control connector. Again, I, I've pointed this out too. If you want to create a table display instead of a list of items, I use the create table action in the data operation connector. Like I said, I'm really starting to feel the love for data operation connector. It's very powerful in your flows. And to delay an action, you can use that delay or delay until in the schedule connector. So. Let me know if you have other go-to use case scenarios for these built-in connectors, and let me know what you want to hear about next. Again, this is all part of my upcoming sessions that you're going to see at the Power Platform Conference in Las Vegas and also at Summit North America in Charlotte. So stay tuned for more cool ways that you can extend your Dynamics 365 customer engagement platform using Power Automate.